As we study different centers of the triangle, we can't leave out the circumcenter. So let's explore some of the properties of the circumcenter. We're going to start out with an acute triangle because it makes things a little bit easier to understand. And we're looking for the point of concurrency of the perpendicular bisectors of a triangle. So what does it mean to be a perpendicular bisector? Well, first of all, you need something to bisect, and that something is the side of the triangle. So notice here I have point E. Ignore D for a second. It's kind of giving away the circumcenter. But let's take a look at point E. Point E is, in fact, the midpoint of this side. You can see this is 4.83, 4.83. And no matter what I do here, point E is actually going to be situated perfectly in between A and B. So that's the bisecting part. Now what's the perpendicular part? Let's put the other two midpoints up. And now let's construct a line segment. And this line segment is going to be perpendicular to the side of the triangle. In other words, it's going to retain the property of having a 90 degree angle. There we can see our 90 degrees. And no matter what I do, because I already gave away the ending here with where point D was, but it's going to retain these two properties. Always the midpoint, always intersects at a 90 degree angle with each one of the sides. And the point where each of these three perpendicular lines intersect is called the circumcenter of a triangle. So what are some of the properties of a circumcenter? Well, first of all, if you're talking about an acute triangle, which we have here, the circumcenter is always inside. But once you make this an obtuse triangle, this circumcenter goes outside of the triangle. Acute, obtuse. Now, if I was to make this a perfect right triangle, and I didn't measure the angle, so I'm just going to kind of do my best to judge it here, the circumcenter actually lies on the hypotenuse of the triangle. And as you can see, it's not just on the hypotenuse, it's on the midpoint of the hypotenuse. And later on in our studies, that's going to be really interesting. So what are some other properties of our little circumcenter here? Well, if we extend line segments from the circumcenter out to each of the vertices, and then we measure them, we find that each one of these lengths is equal. In other words, the circumcenter is actually equidistant from each of the vertices. Even if it's outside of the triangle, these blue line segments are all going to be congruent. And our favorite thing to do whenever we have congruent line segments from a point is to construct a circle. Because each one of these blue segments that are equal, we can consider them radii of a circle, and we can construct the circle. When a circle is constructed about a polygon, and remember a triangle is still a polygon, and it touches each one of the vertices, we use the word circumscribed to describe the circle. So in other words, this circle is circumscribed about the triangle. And it's nice because it has that same little prefix, prefix, so circumscribed, so there's a circle that's circumscribed about the triangle, and the center of that circle happens to be called the circumcenter, and that is why. So to recap, the properties of a circumcenter are first, that it is the point of intersection of all three perpendicular bisectors of the triangle. Second, the circumcenter lies within the triangle for acute, outside of the triangle for obtuse, and on the side of the triangle for all right, ang right triangles. Then, the circumcenter is equidistant from each of the vertices of the triangle, which makes it the center of the circle that can be circumscribed about the triangle.